morning. Hi. Can I do the introduction in that? Hmm. Let's see. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lee. I'm a New Zealander who lives in the East Riding of Yorkshire. This is my podcast about my handmade life. Welcome! It's really nice to be sitting and chatting with you. It's been such a long time since, I think it was before early December, that uh, I've actually been able to sit down and have a little talk with you and I have missed it so much. Um, yeah, stuff has happened. So the hairy man and I have separated. Uh, so since I spoke to you last, well, I've had a month-long trip to see my family in New Zealand and I started a new job uh, and I've purchased a car and I've moved house. So, yeah. But I get to work quite early to try and miss the traffic and so I've just been sitting in my car and having a little read or a knit in the morning and so I thought that this might be a good time to catch up with you. So I'm just going to film little segments and I don't even have my show notes. I think I might have put my show notes notebook in storage so I might need another show notes notebook. Yeah, so here I am sitting in the car park talking to a camera and a lady's just getting out of her car over here. <laughs> so my car knitting at the moment, I keep um, keep some knitting in the glove box just for little times like this and I am working on my second uh, rest and rejuvenation, rejuvenation sock. This is a pattern by Marceline Smith who is Hay Brown Berry and I'm knitting it. I pause because I used to have right on the tip of my tongue what the yarns were. One is a ye ye not Eden, Eden Cottage yarn. I think it's Tempo 4-ply. I think that's what it is. And the other is Socks Year um, by Coop Knits. I could probably rustle around in the bag and find the labels, but hey-ho. Um, yeah, if you want to see the correct yarns, it'll be on my project page in Ravelry. And I've just realised that I haven't put any hair product in this morning, so I'm a little fluffy. <laughs> so, there, have, there are a, a couple of things going on in the Ravelry group that I wanted to talk to you about. And the first one is Knit 1000 Grams, which should be coming to the end um, sort of wrapping up at the end of this month because we would usually be at the Edinburgh Yard Festival about now so yeah um, and I had thought I had been thinking about extending it because um, I was going to be going to Wonderwall with some friends in April and I thought well that would be a good time to to tie it all up uh, and also there was no way that I was going to meet my one kilo goal by the end of this month because so much, so many other things have been going on but with the coronavirus pandemic going on who knows if Wonderwall will be going ahead hmm. I think I'll tie it up then anyway for Wonderwall weekend because even if it doesn't happen it will be a fun thing for us to do in the group whilst we're all stuck at home if that is what is going to be happening. Yeah and in the Ravelry group we have also uh, just completed the first advent mini skein swap which has been loads of fun uh, and I realised that because of because I haven't been podcasting, I haven't been able to sort of pop in here and give any updates on that. So, uh, this week I am going to set up the swap for quarter two. Please make sure that you sign up 
for each quarter individually um, and in the correct thread because life changes and you know if something changes in your life and you can't complete the year or it's just you decide it's not what you want to do then it's very easy for you to pull out um, yeah so I will set up a thread over in the Ravelry group before this goes up before you see this <laughs> So if you want to join in the, the swap then you'll be very welcome. What we do is we exchange, we swap six 10 gram mini skeins four times a year um, so that you have a sort of like a homemade yarn advent calendar at Christmas time. That's the intention. If you want to join in for something else um, and just swap mini skeins for a blanket that you're doing or if you just want to swap mini skeins for another tradition uh, maybe for Easter mini skeins or something like that then you're very welcome to join in it's not just it doesn't have to be all just about Advent it's just that that's the thing that usually motivates me <laughs> so I think I think that's the updating all the updating that I have to do this morning. I'm just watching someone else pull in who's looking at me oddly because I'm talking to a camera on my dashboard. Um, and I hope to be back. Maybe not in my car, but wherever I get a chance to talk to you about some of the other stuff that I've been doing. Hi, welcome back. Sitting in my car again. Today I'm working on a different project and it's in a bit, bit of a tangle. Oh, squirrel! He's just leaping across the car park there, right in front of the car. Little grey squirrel, not one of the nice red ones or anything, but yeah. Yeah, so. Whilst I was away in New Zealand, I started a new project, um, something that I thought would be quite small and easy to carry with me. Um, and I am knitting on the Long Love cardigan. Oh, and it is in a tangle. There are several versions of this cardigan, uh, I think, yeah, one is a four ply, I've forgotten all the names for them, I paused there because I was about to rattle off the names and then realised that they weren't actually in my brain. So it's a shawl collar cardigan, this one is four ply and it's um, a long line cardigan and it's by Ankerstrick. Yeah, and there are several versions of this pattern. One is, I think it's four ply, but it's a shorter version. And the other one is in something like Let Lopi or something like that. So it's kind of a big coatish sort of a cardigan. And did I bring the labels for this or I left them in the other bag? I have. I'm using a beautiful Wensleydale yarn. Here we go, that's a bit brighter than it actually appears in person. Um, beautifully hand dyed by Bear and Sheep's clothes, clothing. And as I said, it's a, it's a lovely Wensleydale yarn. And I got this at Yarndale last year. And I was feeling incredibly clever because I had picked up five skeins of it. Uh, which should be loads for a four ply long line cardigan. And then, when I was out in New Zealand and I was rifling through my suitcase I realized that one of the skeins is actually DK <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to run out or not um, I don't know if I need to get panicky and contact the yarn dyer yet um, I'm just gonna see how it goes because the other thing is I would quite like a DK hat in this yarn so if there is a skein left over I kind of want to keep it so anyway 
I've got to a certain point on the torso and I have three balls of yarn connected to this so it is a bit of a tangle. So I got to, I got a little bit of length put on the torso and I've decided to do the sleeves and then just see how much yarn I have left over. I'd like these to be full length sleeves. I think I've made a couple of, I made Markley last year that I made three quarter length sleeves because I thought I was going to run out of yarn and I did. Well, I didn't run out but I only had a little walnut size bit left. Um, but yeah, I would really like these to have, this to have full length sleeves. So I'm going to knit those and see how I get on. Um, I have put this, I transferred this into, I decided to treat myself to one of the bags that I made last year for the shop. Um, and I thought I would say a little bit about the shop this morning now that I've gone back into full time work. Um, because... It is still open and there is still stuff in it, but I won't be sewing new things for the shop anymore, new physical items. I still have some patterns up my sleeve um, to come out and to do, so that's really exciting. But for the time being, anyway, there won't be any new physical items going in. So if you do want a needle case or a notions case um, or or one of these bags, then they are still in the shop right now. Um, and if you want one, you can order one. Um, what's going to be interesting though is to see what happens with the post office and how long that stays open with the COVID-19 pandemic. So I shall play that by ear and just see how we go. Yeah. That's a really uncertain situation. I'm not even sure what to say about it because I don't want to... I don't feel panicky about it, but it is a pretty weird and frightening time. So anyway, if if you have been affected by COVID-19, you're having to self-isolate, you're having to cancel your holidays or travels or just think about childcare because schools are closing and things like that. Not here in the UK, but in other parts of the world then I just want to send you a lot of love right now because it's a crazy time. <laughs> so anyway, that's it from me for this morning and yeah, I shall probably see you again tomorrow. Today I'm trying a slightly different angle. I'm, it's, I'm in the car park again and it's raining so it's just quite nice to be nice and cosy in here and just listen to the rain on the roof of the car. I don't know if you can hear that. Maybe you can hear a little bit of traffic. I'll stop talking and you can listen to the rain on the roof with me. <laughs> It's always a nice sound when you're warm and dry. Um, today I'm wearing my girl's best friend short, which I have only just finished. So the knitting on this has been finished for some time. Um, I think last time I spoke to you, I had cast off and I found that I had cast off too tight and so I ripped it back and got a larger needle size and cast off again and I'm really pleased I did that. It meant that I could block it out a lot better and it's, it was just bigger and a lot more wearable. And then I made the pom-poms to put on it. This was one of the things when I first saw um, a friend at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival wearing this shawl. This was the thing that really appealed to me about it was the pom-poms. Um, and I was running on the philosophy that a pom-pom is never too big. So I made, I used my clover pom-pom makers and I made the bigger size pom-pom and I felt over pom pom <laughs> So this weekend I finally made up the smaller size pom-poms and attached them and I am really pleased with the way that this has come out. So it's the girl's best friend shawl. Um, I don't have the pattern with me and I've forgotten who it's by but it will be, um, I'll link the 
my Revelry project page in the show notes so you'll be able to see that there. Um, the yarn, this tealy colour is meadow yarn and I don't remember what the what the colourway name is. I think it might have been Ebony Sense or something like that, but I could be totally wrong. <laughs> and it is the Blue Face Lester Nylon yarn. The orange here is a Ginger Twist Studio yarn and it's her sheepish sheepish sock. So that's another Blue Face Lester DK. And then this one is Beehive Yarns. I have no idea what the colorway was. Actually this one is a variation I think of the Core Blimey color. No, not Core Blimey. Maybe Melon Balls of Fire. That's it. Um, it's a variation of that, a non-standard one. And this one is by Beehive Yarns and it's a Merino Cashmere Nylon. Um, and I have no idea what the colourway is. But it will be all on my project page. And I am really pleased with the way that this has come out. When I... I don't know if I told you this or not, but I'll tell you again. <laughs> When I started to apply for jobs, I realised that I didn't have any workwear in my wardrobe. After, I think, seven years of working at home and just wearing jeans and t-shirts, I didn't actually have anything that formal to wear. And so I went for a free styling appointment. Um, and that was such good fun. And so much easier than actually shopping because I sat there and swilled coffee. I had a long chat with the stylist. I sat there and swilled coffee and then she wandered in with a rail that had about 20 things on it. And I just chose some of them, which was really easy. <laughs> and so um, there was a really strong orange theme with an, on that rail and sort of teals and greens. And so I decided to make this to sort of fit in with my new capsule work wardrobe and actually now that I've started work those are the clothes that I'm wearing just all the time um yeah so that was really worth doing it was at John Lewis um and they do free styling appointments and if you don't like shopping I can highly recommend it <laughs> if you don't like shopping and you need a little capsule wardrobe or you just need to sort of judge your wardrobe it's probably a, a good thing to do and it was loads of fun yeah, I don't usually plug major retail <laughs> shops on this podcast, but you know, but that was where I—that was why I chose to knit this and these specific colours because it was, would go with all of those outfits. So those are the things that I'm working on at the moment, and I think I've spoken about all the things that are going on in the Ravelry group. I hope you'll join in because. Oh, it's just, with COVID-19, it's just such strange times and we're spending more time at home, we're being told not to socialise, um, I'm still coming to work, I've not been told to work from home, so yeah, just really odd times. So please come and join us in the Ravelry group and just share some community and a little bit of love. I've really enjoyed coming back and talking to you. It's oh, it's been such a long time and I really enjoy the community and the chat that we have. So it's so nice to be back. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed yourself, please like and subscribe. And I will hopefully see you again very soon. Cheerio!